Hey, my name is Tyler, and this is my Ford E350 that I converted last year. It took me about six months. I've been living in it for six of the last nine months, and the last three months I've been spending half the time adventuring in this and living in Vancouver. Fire extinguisher, always important. You know, you don't want to be having any fires inside the van you can't put out. Well, if you want to come on in here, this is it. There's your bed. We've got the convertible table and stuff here. We can take that down. That goes right into a bed. Literally only takes two seconds. Made this out of a old work light stand. You've got a full double bed once you do that. Super comfortable. Love it. Definitely worth the space that it takes up in the van. For sure. The van when I first got it was totally empty and I just started strapping wood down and built it into what you see here. As far as the van goes insulation wise on the floor there's a full 1x3 lattice set up with pink hard shell insulation, 3 quarter inch tongue and groove and then the 8th inch linoleum on top which is like a memory foam so it's got another layer of insulation and comfort as well. Uh, and then the walls as well have vapor barrier, reflectix, uh, two and a half inch foam and reflective house insulation and then another layer of all the wood in the walls and vapor barrier and stuff on top of that. Underneath here, if you open this first curtain you've got baskets full of granola bars. Pretty standard for us van life dirt bags. And then my, one of my favorite pieces of the van is this Pelican cooler which if you put blocks of ice in it will keep all your food and your eggs all that kind of stuff cold for a week to ten days on you know, a few dollars worth of ice which is really great since I didn't want to go with a lot of solar power in the van. And to the other side here there's some gray water recycling storage for the stove the ever so important broom for sweeping every five minutes <laughs> and then we've got one pressurized water tank under here that you can use a bike pump or a standard uh, tire compressor that runs off 12 volt and that allows me to be able to have pressurized water to wash dishes more efficiently and not waste. The sink here just has this guy which has these feet here that keep it from sliding around while it's driving. Uh, this little soap dispenser underneath and then gravity fed water tank that's here I won't show you just because I don't want to drain any water, but it does work. For cooking, I just got this little Coleman stove. Stored right here with some bungees. And you bring it out. And just unfold it here. As far as electronics for the van goes, I'm just running it off the regular car battery and running three 2 watt light bulbs uh, from goal zero. And then a small USB charger in the back here that allows me to run anything 12 volt or USB which keeps my phone, um, my 12 volt shot back running, the tire compressor if need be, uh, and anything to charge up my phone for emergencies, the battery jump kit for the car as well. In the future I'm planning on getting some kind of auxiliary battery set up, but for the winter right now I'll probably just hold off on getting solar. Uh, because it's not really effective during the winter months here in Vancouver. <laughs> as far as showering goes, uh, I've got a custom made 25 liter ABS tank here you can pressurize with the 12 volt tire compressor or bike pump. And that simply can get brought outside. Or if you just grab a plastic tote of any kind, you can just hang it up here and have a quick shower in the van. So when building a van I wanted to make sure that there was a lot of storage area that was above my head so I had a lot more room to move around just while I was sitting and stuff like that so I built these overhead storage compartments um, that hold pretty much all my clothes. This is like a bottomless cavern that just seems to go forever and my keyboard nice and safe up there and they just latch with magnets in this simple little pull cord thing and same with this one. I want everything to be really simple and not have all kinds of complicated expensive hardware and hinges and rails to shim and get straight. 
it's just much easier going that way. As far as stealth camping goes, that was, as much of my friends will tell you, was my major goal for the van. As you see from the outside, it's a big high roof, old service van. The lights on top really help. I've got two high-vis vests in the front seats and I carry four full-size pylons. And mostly, if you just back in somewhere <laughs> and throw the cones out and you've got those high-vis vests, I also keep my OFA 3 manual in the dash. And there's not been a single knock. It's a, probably the anomaly for van life people, but I have not had one knock on the door from a cop or a neighbor. The only time ever was when my friends thought I was the cops. <laughs> yeah, and right above the cab here is just a bunch of empty closet space that is good for friends' gear when they come and stay in the van. It's all nice that their stuff can be in the front and my stuff's in the back, so when we're both in here getting ready, you're not climbing all over each other, literally. Right here, axes, ropes, harnesses, all your climbing what-have-yous. Frisbee golf discs, Travis Burke. Mr. Van Life out there, I saw that you have your frisbee golf discs and I'm open to your challenge. <laughs> so far the magnetic, magnetic knife holder has yet to fail while I'm driving, no matter how intense the roads. Thanks Ikea. I've got three laptop cooling fans, one here, one here, and then one that can go in the roof here. Uh, just to kind of get air flowing and moving, but again they all run off USB and have maybe a couple watts of drain, so. Yeah, I think I've ran the lights and all the fans and charged my phone for a week or ten days without starting the car before. So, it's, you know, as long as you're not charging anything like incandescent light bulbs or a blender or, you know, watching movies on a TV, you can pretty much get away with just your car battery. <laughs> Dry goods storage up here, just pasta, canned goods, rice, peanut butter, all that kind of stuff. And then all my dishes and everything are all under here, as well as the shower curtain for the shower just up there. And then underneath here, you've got your little pull-out trash can, just some camping gear, bin full of shoes, extra blanket, simple stuff. This is just every tool that I use to build the van. You never know when you're going to need them again or have to fix or improve something. Crash pad, a little bit of bike gear, and then just mountain bike storage here. You can fit two bikes in there, but I like to just have one. Instead of having curtains on the back, just there's this fabric here, just as something to look at. That's nice. And I just kind of used these antimicrobial gym mats and Reflectix with some gray rubber to make sure that it wasn't so shiny from the outside and it kind of matched the security gate. And that insulates really well with the light, heat, cold, sound especially out the windows. Actually on the ferry today I was sleeping and they got mad and banged on the door because I was asleep in the ferry and it was empty. I got up and there is empty. I ran out with my bare feet. <laughs> Just so quiet in there I didn't realize they had announced that the ferry had landed. And I guess this answers the toilet question, the, the always burning question, where do van lifers go to the bathroom? And this one's got a toilet. Roll up my little mural here. And you can open it up. Standard little Dometic <coughs> pumpable flushing toilet. Works great. It'll probably lasts like a week. You just dump it in any standard toilet. You don't have to go to RV sites and do anything like that with holding tanks, it just kind of dump it out and you're good. One thing I almost forgot about is I modified this little compartment. It holds a jerry can, but there's a hole that goes into the cab right under the sink. And you can hook these hoses up and collect rainwater pretty easily on these rain gutters. As far as recommending van life to people, I would recommend that if you are thinking about taking the leap, 
to just do it because I'm sure that if you're already looking at YouTube right now, this is either your first of a hundred or one hundred <laughs> the video that you've watched about van life. And as you see, the proof of concept is there. You can do it. There are difficulties, but those difficulties, you know, are not nearly as insurmountable as they may seem. Like, I spent a whole six months here in the winter, and there was, you know, mornings I'd wake up and it's minus 15 degrees, and my water jugs are all frozen, and I can't do anything. But then there's the moments where you wake up, and you just drove all night, and you wake up and you don't even know where you are, and then you wake up and you're at some magical beach or some forest, so... You know, everything, if you're thinking about it, just just do it, that's for sure. <laughs> as far as the philosophy on life, I would just say do what makes you happy unless it hurts other people. Uh, and just spend time being creative, spend time being social. Like, value the time you spend with the real human beings. And if you can live your life not attached to the internet, do it.